iPods. All right, look, I already know I'm gonna get like a bunch of people in the comments going, oh my gosh, is this a Dank Pods video? And no, obviously this isn't a Dank Pods video. This whole intro here is just to confuse you. Though be sure to go check out his channel. He makes some pretty cool stuff. And yes, he talks about iPods, but I'm gonna be talking about iPods today too, because we're gonna be trying to run Windows XP on one of these things by using a pretty cool program called Mojo Pack. Now I had never heard of this. This is a program from the late 2000s that allowed you to run a portable installation of Windows XP on either a USB drive or an iPod. Yeah, they officially supported iPods for this, and I didn't even know this program existed. I thought this would be really cool to take a look at, so thank you to everybody who suggested this program to me, and huge thanks to Audible for sponsoring today's episode. I'll be talking more about that later, so be sure to stick around. But first, let's get rid of this dank pod style setup here. I'll, I'll just, uh, I, why did I do this? I don't know why I ever thought this was a good idea of plugging like freaking lights into this thing. All right, jokes aside, here we are on the trusty Dell Latitude D610, and it is currently running, of course, Windows XP Service Pack 3 with a, a very nice desktop wallpaper that is not Bliss for once. So we got a different wallpaper this time, so that's cool. But anyways, before we can plug the iPod into the computer and get everything set up, we need to install iTunes so that the computer can recognize the iPod because not only does this install iTunes, it will also install the drivers that Windows needs to figure out what this is that you've plugged into your computer. So what I've got is the latest version of iTunes that runs on Windows XP, which I believe came out in the year 2015. I can show you that by going to the properties here. We can view the digital signature. I'm pretty sure this is uh, from sometime in 2015, September 14th, 2015. Yeah. And this is version 12.0. 1.3.6 so we're going to uh hit next here and just go through the installation process i found this actually on the internet archive which is awesome somebody uh you know archived this file on there so i will have this link down below for anybody who's trying to use a xp computer with an old ipod you can still use these ipods with the latest version of itunes at least on windows because itunes is no longer a thing on mac os but uh for windows yeah you can still use these iPods on like a Windows 10 computer, for example, but just to get the full experience here and to take us back to the year 2008, which is when this specific version of Mojo Pack that we're going to take a look at came out, we got to use Windows XP, right? Now, before we install Mojo Pack, I want to tell you a little bit about it, and this is a perfect time to do it while iTunes is installing right here. So Mojo Pack was first released in the year 2006 by a company called RingCube Technologies, and like I said earlier, it allowed you to create a portable installation of Windows XP on a USB drive or an iPod. And I believe it worked with other media players as well. Now, it does this through virtualization. So you need to have a host computer, a physical Windows XP machine for you to use Mojo Pack. And this is just like any other virtualization software like VMware or VirtualBox that it utilizes the processor and the memory and obviously the monitor, the peripherals. But what sets Mojo Pack apart from a more traditional virtual machine software is that that this was essentially made for portability. What you're doing is creating an ultra portable installation of Windows XP. So what I can do is once I install Mojo Pack on this thing, I can install all the programs that I normally use. I can copy the documents that I frequently access over to this device. And then I can go to any other Windows XP computer, say at my job, my friend's house, say at an internet cafe, wherever, and I can plug this device in, run the exe file that's on it, and get access to all of my programs and documents that I copied over to it. And I think that an iPod is a perfect device to use for something like this, because if you owned an iPod, you're likely going to be carrying it around with you anyways when you're traveling to listen to music and stuff, right? So why not install Mojo Pack on it to also carry around all of your programs and documents with you. As long as you find another computer, you can get access to all of them. Especially considering that Mojo Pack was completely free for personal non-commercial use. Now they did have a deluxe version that cost $49.99 that had some additional features, and you could also use it for commercial purposes if you bought an enterprise license. But we're gonna be checking out the personal non-commercial version today, specifically version 2.0, which came out in the year 2008. So two years after the initial release. We're going to uh, agree to these terms here and move on with the 
installation. So we'll click on I agree. And the first thing it will do is ask you where you want to install Mojo Pack. So we could install this to the C drive as a standard program in the program files folder, or we could install it to our portable device, which I've got right here. It's the E drive in this case, and it is the iPod. And that's all there is to it. It will now begin installing Mojo Pack and copying the files over to our iPod right here. And that's it, we're done. Very quick, very straightforward installation. So we'll click on finish here and it'll close out of the installer. And now you see we've got the Mojo Pack shortcut on the desktop here. Now it's gonna start automatically for us. It will check for updated versions. It won't find any because this is the latest version. And here we are loading into the Mojo Pack environment. So it takes over your entire desktop and it will uh, eventually once it loads. Now it does take a little while to load uh, the very first time. This is its first boot process essentially. Obviously you're gonna wanna make sure to leave your iPod plugged in while it's doing this. You definitely don't want to unplug it. And the iPod tells you that right on it. It says do not disconnect. So right here, it's loading configuration. You are running Mojo Pack for the first time. It'll take one to two minutes. But you see here we are loading into a Windows XP environment. So it's now setting up personalized settings just like Windows does when you log into a new user account for the first time. And it comes up with this register or register later prompt here. And it tries to load something that I believe is just going to try to load off the web server that it cannot access anymore because it doesn't exist. So we'll click register later. Just I mean, you can't register even if you wanted to now and once that finishes it will load into a standard windows xp environment so here you go now you've probably noticed this bar along the top here so this allows you to switch between the mojo pack virtualized environment that we're in right now and the host environment. So if I wanna get back to the host computer, I can click on this host switch button up here, and now I'm back on the host computer. If I wanna go back to Mojo Pack, I can click the button again, and I'm back in the Mojo Pack virtualized environment. Let's go ahead and install some programs. So what better program to start out with than uh, Doom 2? Yeah, we're gonna get some Doom action going on in here. So I've got the drive popped in, or the disc popped into the drive. We're gonna pop the drive in, and we'll open up my computer here, and uh, you can see that Mojo Pack here detects the iPod as the C drive, since that's what it's booted off of. But we also still have it showing down here because we're getting access to the host computer's peripherals. So here's the uh, disk drive right here. It's actually open up in another window. And we're gonna run the batch file here to install it. So we'll uh, install it to C Doom 2, that's fine. Directory does not exist, yes, we wanna create it. And there we go. So now if we go to my computer, we'll go to C, there's a folder called Doom 2. So I always gotta run uh, Doom 2 here. And there we go, everybody. We've got Doom 2 running on an iPod, literally. <laughs> That's crazy to think about. We're running Doom 2 off of a freaking iPod. Okay, this is just, this is hilarious. Yeah, we don't have sound and everything configured properly. We'll just close out of it and quit to DOS, or Windows in this case, and we'll run setup here. Okay, so now we can save parameters and launch Doom 2. So now we should get the music and the sound effects. And you can see it is a little... <laughs> So, so it's a little laggy. Oh, I oh, pff, I hit the Windows key by accident. Uh, that is likely due to well the fact that we're running it off of an iPod, right? I don't know what the speed of this hard drive is in here, but it's also running over a USB 2.0 connection. Actually, this might not even be 2.0. This could be like USB 1.1. To be honest with you, I'm pretty sure that's 2.0. We'll just close out of it here. I'll spare you from the. Uh, from the sound there, so we'll close out of that. Okay, so next up, we're gonna try to install Microsoft Office 2003, but before we get to that, I wanna talk a bit more about today's video sponsor, Audible. I take it that you're probably interested in iPods. I've got a few of them. And they're certainly great devices for listening to music, but you know what else you can listen to on them? Audiobooks. Oh, you still read books, you say? What do you think this is, 1984? Oh. In all seriousness, Audible is the place to go for thousands of audiobooks just waiting to be listened to. In fact, they've got so many titles that it would take you over 300 years to listen to all of them. So you better get started now. And since we're on the topic of iPods, why not start with The Perfect Thing by Stephen Levy? It discusses the rise of the iPod from its initial introduction in 2001. And since it was written before the first iPhone was a thing, it'll be pretty interesting to listen to today. And you can do so for completely free by heading on over to audible.com slash michaelmjd or by texting michaelmjd to 500-500 to get yourself a free trial of Audible's Premium Plus membership. 
Each month, you'll get one free credit that you can exchange for an audiobook like the one I just mentioned, and it will be yours forever, even if you decide to cancel your membership. Plus, you'll get access to Audible's Plus catalog, get it? That gives you unlimited listening to a wide selection of titles. So what are you waiting for? It's literally free stuff. Audible.com slash MichaelMJD or text MichaelMJD to 500-500. And huge thanks to Audible for supporting the channel. Now let's see if we can get Office installed, shall we? So here's Office here, and we'll run the setup executable here. And we'll put in the username as Michael. I've got caps locked on here. Michael. And uh, we'll just do, uh, we'll do MJD for the organization. Accept the license terms, and we'll do a, uh, we'll do a complete install. We've got uh, 22 gigs available on the C drive, so that's good. And yeah, we're currently using 5.73 gigs, and that is everything on the iPod. That's, you know, there is music on here. So yeah, here's Office 2003. I'm going through its setup process, uh, just like usual. We'll move the window over here because I want to take a look at some of the configuration options that you have with Mojo Pack. So you've got this uh, system tray icon. If you right click on it, you've got a little menu here. You can switch to the host if you want to from this menu as well. You can exit Mojo Pack if you want to. You can also lock the screen. We'll get into that in a moment. You've got settings, register, which you can do, enable PDF printers. You can choose if you want uh, the pop-ups from the host computer to display while you're in the Mojo Pack environment. You can uh, do some importing and exporting of uh, files. I assume that this requires Mojo Pack Professional, so we can't... Uh, I mean, you can just copy... If this is copying, you know, importing and exporting files and documents, you can just literally really copy it off of the drive from within your host environment but this specific feature requires uh, the the professional version if we go to about here you can see this is again version 2.0.0.0 and there's likely the build number right there yeah but let's go into the configuration option so we'll right click here and whoops I right click on the clock there we'll go to settings now uh, you've got a lot of the same options in that menu so you, here you have again if you want to be notified when new windows and alerts appear on the host computer and the these two options right here are enabled by default and you cannot change them in the free version here. You have to buy one of the paid versions and that's the same for all these policies here. You cannot change any of these unless you buy the professional version or uh, the enterprise version. Now this password tab here ties into uh, locking the screen under this exit mojo pack menu here because what you can do is set a password. So let's say I want to add, uh, let's do the password as MJD. So we'll add that and we'll add a super secure password hint and we'll hit a apply. So now we'll add that password. So if I go down here now and I go to uh, quit Mojo Pack or exit Mojo Pack, I can now click screen lock and that just kicks me back to the host environment here. And you can see here's Office 2003. It's opened up here on the host environment. So we'll just close out of it. But now if I want to get back into my Mojo Pack environment, I'll click on this, but it will ask me for that password. So here it is right here. It says this host computer is not optimized for your USB drive. Uh, that's interesting, but we can type in the password here and press login or press enter. And here we are back in our Mojo Pack environment. It looks like Office 2003 is finished installing. So we'll click on finish here and get out of that. Driver support. This is useful for if you have drivers installed on the host computer uh, and you are trying to use a, a, a device like a printer, for example, within Mojo Pack, you can uh, allow Mojo Pack to access those drivers from within its environment here. So we'll just say, yes, we want this enabled for all future sessions and we'll apply that. Automatic updates, uh, this is something that you cannot change. We'll go to customization here because there are some things you can customize in the free version. For example, the shape of the toolbar. So if you want like a smaller toolbar up here, we can click on apply and you can see it changes to this kind of floating bar now. It doesn't take up uh, as much space as it did before. You can also have it auto hide, very similar to the task bar. In fact, it does a very similar animation here. I can hover over it and get access to it and you can uh, pin it right here if you want to. Uh, this basically does the same thing. You can choose to enable or disable uh, auto hiding uh, from there. So that's pretty nice. You also have advanced customization options and there are a couple things that you can't change. For example, the toolbar logo and the splash screen. These are features that uh, you have to buy the professional version to, to change here. You see the options are grayed out for us. So it doesn't tell us that we can't change them. They're just grayed out. But you can change these four images here. The toolbar backgrounds for the host when you're in the host environment and in the guest environment or the mojo pack environment and same with the button itself up here so if i want to change this button i can do that so let's say just for some fun here let's go to my pictures and change this to 
Uh, gosh. Oh, it looks like we have some different sample pictures too. Did you notice that? Uh, this does require a BMP file, but yeah, it looks like we've got some... Yeah, we have some different sample photos. Interesting. Yeah, these are definitely uh, not in Windows XP by default. So these are probably put in here by... Uh, Mojo Pack or Ring Cube. So that's pretty cool. So we could set this as the desktop background if we want to. There we go. And let's just out of curiosity, let's see if we've got the uh, Windows XP. Oh, it looks like, do we actually have all of the, wow, it looks like we have all, if not most of the Windows XP desktop wallpapers in here. Do we have Bliss? We do have Bliss. We can change this to Bliss if we want to, man, there we go. So uh, yeah, just, uh, just for fun here, let's open up MS Paint the most superior uh, image editing program here. And we'll just take one of these photos in here and we'll save it as a bitmap so we can apply it. House.bmp, there we go. So now we can select this here, hit open. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, is this gonna really be, hang on a second. Oh my God, <laughs> it takes over the entire thing. So it doesn't actually like crop it to the uh, to the proper size. So you would have to do that yourself. But uh, yeah, and now, oh, it looks like the entire thing is the button now. <laughs> okay, that's pretty great. <laughs> so it actually, uh, like it's not mapped to it. I, I think that the buy button now is, <laughs> yeah. So the entire bar is essentially going to switch you back to the host computer now. So it's not like, uh, like the button is the entire image so they don't have it to where like just this specific area is going to be the button it's actually just set to be whatever the size of the image is so we would have to change that ourselves but yeah there you go that's one of the like crazier things you can do with this but uh yeah it is possible to uh you know customize this a little bit yeah i'm just gonna leave this bar up here <laughs> for the rest of the video it looks so Oh man, that's hilarious. But yeah, now that we've got Office installed, we can go into all programs here and uh, launch Microsoft Office if we want to. So this is the standard edition. So you've only got Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. But we can launch Word here and I can, you know, hello world. Oh, it's going to, of course, come up with the activation wizard, close out of that. But yeah, so I can write documents, say I want to save this to, you know, my documents here, we'll save it. And there we go. I've just created a Word document within the Mojo Pack environment. And that's really all there is to it, guys. It is just a, a really awesome program. And like I said, I'm honestly surprised that I had never heard this before. This would have been really cool to like use back in the days of Windows XP, or I mean, Windows Vista was out at this time, but everyone, most people were still using XP. So this would be a really, really awesome program to use. But I've got a bit of an idea for a possible uh, future video. Let me just show you here. Yeah, you think we can upgrade this thing to Windows Vista? Okay, this is, we're gonna have to come back to this, guys. But for now, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I mean, seriously, guys, if you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And if you guys want me to actually try and <laughs> install Windows Vista from within the Mojo Pack environment to see how it handles it, uh, be sure to drop a comment down below and let me know. But that's going to wrap it up for me now, guys. As always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.